Hello, this is Rick Robinson. This video tutorial will walk you through creating a complex clipping path in Microsoft Expression Blend. You'll note that I'm using the Expression Blend 2.5 March 2008 preview. This is the version of Blend that was released at the Mix08 conference to coincide with the first beta of Silverlight 2. This is the first version of Blend that actually adds support for Silverlight 2. So, to get started, we're going to go choose File, New Project, and select the Silverlight 2 application. We're going to call this thing Complex Clipping Path. And we'll click the OK. I want to go here real quick and choose Fit to Screen so that everything fits in here that we're working with. You'll note that uh, Expression Blend has created a Silverlight 2.0 project for us with the standard app.xaml file, which is where your application-wide resources are generally stored. And this file is not really main, made to be edited as is in Expression Blend. In fact, if you double-click it and try to open it, Blend tells you uh, that it's not to be edited here. That's generally taken care of through this resources tab, which we won't get into in this tutorial. Also, we've created a page.xaml file, which is our first user control. You can see that here in the Objects and Timeline menu, or panel rather. Okay, and it's also created a grid as our layout panel. And if you go to the Properties tab, you can see that it's already named it Layout Root for us. This is fine for our purposes, so we'll leave that as is. Now, we're going to need some resources uh, in our project in order to uh, show you some clipping paths. So I'm going to go over here to the Projects tab and right-click on our uh, project, Complex Clipping Path. Choose Add Existing Item. And let's see, I'll grab that video and a JPEG. Okay. Blend's going to add those to our project, and we'll just leave those at the root for now, although in a production application you'd most likely have those under subdirectories and such. So let's first grab the JPEG and bring it out here. Okay. Size that down a little bit. Just to briefly explain what a clipping path is, uh, if you think of, of a piece of paper that maybe you've cut a hole in and then you look at, say, the world through it, then the part that's showing through is your clipping path, and you've more or less clipped the image that you're seeing by that, that path. So we can do the same sort of thing here. If we go up to the Tools panel and choose the ellipse that gives us an ellipse, now let's draw, say, really the thing we care about here is this lady walking on the beach. So we'll draw a little ellipse around her. We're not really sure exactly where she is right now, so what I'll generally do is I'll flip over to the Properties tab, and I'll bring the opacity down. That way I can sort of see where she is so I can better place this. I'll go up here and select Selection tool so I can move it around, and that way I make sure to get this little shadow or reflection of her down in the uh, sand there. And the other thing you want to do here is you want to get rid of the stroke by going over here, choosing Stroke, and click No Brush. So now we don't have a stroke. So with this still selected, you'll hold down your Shift and you'll click your image, and you'll know you'll note that there's what you're doing here is you're cl you're creating a clipping path and you're creating the target that you're going to apply that path to. So, and that the thing that is the target has to be selected last, and you'll know that, that the image is selected last because we have the resize handles here. So once you've done this, you can go up to the Object menu and choose Path, Make Clipping Path. And there you have it, your first clipping path. I'm just going to do a quick Control Z to undo what we did, and just to show you one thing. Now, if you note before, we clicked Object, Path, Make Clipping Path. This is also available. You can collect your ellipse and your image again. You should also be available here in the right click or context menu, Make Clipping Path. Same thing. Um, and it's also available here in the Objects and Timeline panel as well. What you're probably saying is that's not very complex, and this is supposed to be a complex clipping path, so let me try a few things. Let's first just delete all of that, and I'm going to go into my Layout route, and I'm going to change the background here in the Properties panel just to black, because I know it works better with the video that I'm about to drop on the, uh, the canvas, or grid rather. I'm going to go back to my Projects tab, 
And I'm going to grab this video. Okay. And we'll just center that there. Okay, this time we're going to use our pen tool. And I will do my best to try to draw a star shape here for you. And you'll notice when I come back to the end here that the cursor changes to a little O. That means I'm about to complete the path. So now I'm going to go back and select. Okay, so I've got this. I'm going to go to the Properties tab. Same thing as last time. I'm going to go in and take a stroke. Get rid of it. And I don't really need to adjust the opacity here because I can pretty much see where I want to put it. Now with our star selected, we'll come in and hold down the Shift key and select the video. And go to Object, Path, Make Clipping Path. And then if we run this application by hitting the F5 key, you'll see that our video comes through just the area that we've cut out. I'm going to show you one more thing uh, that, where you can combine paths as well. So I'm going to do a Control Z, which will undo what we had, and I'm going to get rid of the star because I don't really need that anymore. Okay, before we get started on this one, I'm going to go in and I'm going to click. You see this column with the lock? I'm going to click the lock on the complex clipping path, uh, the complex clipping video. That way, the video can't be moved around, and you'll see why in just a moment. So I'm going to go back over here to my ellipse. I want my rectangle back. And let's draw, hold down the shift key, which will make it uh, square instead of rectangular. So let's drag out about a, you know, 60-ish. And then I'm going to grab these handles. You can see this changes to a little plus. This we can allow to round our corners. We could go all the way down to a circle if we wanted to. We're going to just round them just enough. Okay, and I'm going to go back and select our selection tool. You can also get by uh, to the selection tool just by hitting the letter V, which is also a good fast shortcut. So if I bring this over here and I want to create a bunch of these. So if you hold down the control key, you'll see that the cursor changes showing another item. So I'm going to pull this down here and you can see the you can just barely see the red lines that blend gives us to help align things and we can just keep doing that, okay? And then here I'm going to select them all. And the same thing, I'm going to hold down the control, pull them apart. And you'll notice I'm kind of building a 4x4 grid. And here I can select all of them by doing, by just going across them like that and letting it select. And the reason I can do that is because I have this video locked. If I didn't, I'd be dragging the video off the screen. So now that I've got all those selected, I want to go get rid of my stroke just like before. Click the no brush, okay, and I'm going to move that sort of centered on my video. Now, here's where you combine the paths to create a composite path. You can right click, get down here to path, make compound path. Same things available up here in the object menu, path, make compound path. So that's going to take all those paths and make it into one path as you can see here. Now with this one path still selected, I can hold down shift and select the video, except that I can't because it's locked. So I'm going to unlock it. Then I'm going to select it again with the object, make clipping path, and if you'll run this, you'll see a really nice effect.